The recording's in progress. <laughs> this is the most excitement I've ever felt in my life, I think. Chavra, first of all, it's a day after Shabbos. We're all ready for Shabbos. We're all ready for Shabbos. Samson is in the woods in Uman. He's mamish there. He's there. Chavra, he's there. Tamar is guarding Am Yisrael. She's here. Kislasi is running to the wine store to deliver for all of Am Yisrael for Chag. My Wilder in Houston. Aaron Bluestein. Oh, Aaron Bluestein. I don't think we, we can't reveal him yet. His face is in the picture. But Yoni Strassen, we all know, is uh, learning with her of Joey and learning by Derek every single second of the day. So um, this is a very exciting time. It's a very exciting time because up until now, we've been listening to uh, music at the beginning and it's pre-recorded, pre-recorded music on Apple Music, on YouTube and Gavaldik Nagunim, Gavaldik artists. But we have the opportunity right now to hear from our Chavra, our own Chavra, Rab Aaron Bluestein, Rab Dani. Wow. They're, they're like in a five star hotel right now. So, just like a little, I mean, they, I guess they could give the Kavana. Oh, as Nitai Harari comes on. As Nitai Harari comes on. Nitai, we're getting a live concert from Dani and Aaron Bluestein. It's the biggest, the biggest day of our life, Mamish. Right, so just a little Kavana, and then I'll pass it over to the bottom left of the screen. God created man because he loves stories, according to Rav Shlomo Karbach. The whole world is God telling a story. But the deepest depths, we all know, of closest to Hashem is when you could tell him your story. So while we're hearing the nigan, a million different things could come to your head. But hopefully this could be a little kavana as we're closing our eyes, as we're getting into it, to tell Hashem our story. Yeah. Oh, Jack. What is the chus to be here? I want to thank Rev. Jack and all for, for, for coming out. Before before we share the nigan, just a little uh, just a little something to get to get started. Just the thought process behind it. So um, it was the chus to be the big thing we have is that, as the Sfasem says in his introduction to Perkei Ovos, that the vote of a Yid is to, while well, be in this world, really be as if you're living in the Yadim, as if you're surfing Shemayim with Hashem. And I was, I was like, I was next to Dani and Shul, and I was reading up Sukkot Zimra, and I stumbled upon a apostle who said, Renan Kriyash Malmita as well, Yoshe Viseser Elyon, someone who sits in this world, but he's in the Yonim, that person is, is serving with Hashem, but sell Shaddai is no name. That the, the shadow of Hashem is going to protect that person. And I think that sums it up perfectly. And but what's a shadow? I mean, there's a shadow. I mean, someone's in front of you, someone's around you, and it's casting, there's light coming, but it's casting darkness upon you. But that darkness is you know, why we think it's darkness, it's really Hashem. I think that's the best, especially we go into El Rashana, recognize that if we try to, especially this year, live a life where we're, we're mamish floating. We're, we're, we're in the Yainim, and we can have a time where Hashem is all encompassing all around us, and that the shadow of Hashem is protecting us through all what might seem like darkness, but really is the light of Hashem. Also, if you want to follow along, it's Tehillim 91, just to see the words, if you want to pull it up. Jack, maybe you could share it on the screen. Hopefully the Hebrew will learn the nigga. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share it to the chat. Here's the link, Hebra. Right here, 1291. Exactly. Are you ready? Good to go. Our hearts are open. 
Uh, one thing to add before we do start, P.S. Rebbe says that every key, every locksmith has, has a key with which can open many doors. But song is such a key as it, as it can lock all doors. So we're going the song, can unlock the doors as we go and open, open up the Shari Shemaim in, in a couple hours. Na 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 na.
That's the name again. It's called Elyon. Wow. Wow. Maybe we're recording like a real studio because I don't know if like the recording ends. No, yeah. We're, we're, we're going to run it back. We're going to run it back for sure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Deborah, what a treat. What a treat. Pre Rosh Hashanah. Deborah, this is, this is less than 12 hours ago. Not even. Last night, just like Hashem wrote it. Rev Donnie has to give one story that just sends you straight Don, to like straight Don, to like, Don, bring us higher and higher. Just saying, if you want to say to feel so there before you start, it's gonna be it's gonna be a wild trip. <laughs> there's, a, there's a story by the Rabbi of Zidichov. Did the Khyber hear me okay or the strumming? <laughs> yeah, okay. Story by the Rabbi of Zidichov, who was sitting by one beautiful day, just sitting inside his little makam, learning a Gvald piece of Torah. And there was a lot of excitement going around in the town. And the Chaver came running over to his windowsill, the very makam, the very, very place, the very spot that the Rabbi of Zidichov was learning. And the Chaver said, Rabbi, Rabbi, I think Mashiach's here. They're saying that Mashiach has come. Saying, saying that Mashiach has arrived. It's finally here. So the rabbi, very calmly, not getting too excited yet, gets up from his spot from where he was sitting, the place where he was learning, the place where he was bringing down all the shefa. He gets up very slowly from his seat, pokes his head out the window, and starts to sniff the air for a few minutes, and let the breeze come against his face. And a week passes by and no one says a thing before one of the Hasidim had built up the courage to ask the question we've all been thinking. Rebbe, just because we all thought Meshav was here, why did it take you to stand up from your makam, from the place that you were learning in, and stick your head out the window to see if Meshav was here? And the Rebbe answered that because where I'm sitting, the place that I'm learning my Torah, the headspace that I'm in, the Shiach is already here. So I had to get up from the place that I was in, and I had to go outside to the place that you guys are standing and see if Mashiach really came. Kaiba teaches us the lesson very simply that a person can access the inner Mashiach already with inside themselves. Yes, the great Ula that's going to come at the end of days. It's a beautiful thing. But a person doesn't have to live in darkness until then. A person can create Mashiach in the very space that they're sitting in. Because when a person recognizes that there's nothing I'm lacking in this very moment, then they've just entered into the gates of Ghana. We should all be zoked to this Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> Oh, I 
May this year all be zaycheh to reach all yanim, reach yanim in this world. Shalach Zach, Shalach Ochavra, Ochavra, Shalach Dani, Jack, what is it close? I think um, <clears throat> unless someone wants to add anything, there's really no words to say. I think it would be the service if we uh, continue with some Torah because we need a lot of time to internalize what just happened for the last 10 minutes with the niggin, with the story, with the Torah from our blue team before. So if anyone has anything to add before we uh, conclude, that was the most beautiful stealing Torah, the most beautiful, I mean, treat ever and gift, really. Thank you, guys. Does anyone have anything to add? I got to share one Zach. I got to share one thing. <laughs> Just, I read this yesterday. Oh, send me straight to the him. Yeah. Quick, you have time for a quick story or just get to the nimshal? Of course, of course, of course. There was a king. About to, every, every muscle start touch with a king. And so he decided he was going to put on, put on some hunter's clothes. Just go out and just talk to himself. So he goes out of the kingdom, finds a way out, and he starts walking talking, thinking to himself, doing whatever he needs, and just continues walking. An hour goes by, two hours, three hours, four hours. Next thing you know, he turns around, he's miles away, years away, hours away from the kingdom. And he doesn't look at the king, so he doesn't know what to do. Starts panicking, he wonders, hold on a second. Uh, it's gonna be okay. So he's looking around and sees all these poor people there, all these homeless people there, and he says, do you guys know the way back to the, to the kingdom? And I'll start laughing again. I'm like, oh, like, good bit. Like, who are you? And he's like, no, no, like, I'm the king. I need to get back. And I'm like, all right, go on. Like, get out of here. He goes from person to person. Ends up, he finally finds one guy. And I was like, you, you kind of look at the king. And he's like, well, I actually am the king. Like, I need a way back. He's like, I'll walk you. So he walked four hours all the way back to the kingdom. And obviously, they're schmoozing, they're hocking the whole time. And they, became, they become boys. And awesome. So then the king appoints him to be the to be like a trusted and most trusted advisor. Awesome. So the king's there and, and after years go by, their, their relationship gets stronger and stronger. And then turns out the, the trusted advisor told all the all the like the enemies of the of the kingdom the, the all the king's secrets. And they they put him in court, he's Chai Misa. They're gonna hang him. So he's he's about to get hung, the noose is around his neck, and they go, You have one last wish. What is it? Says, can you put the clothes back on me that, that I came into the that I came into the kingdom with? They're all like, like all all the chevers washing. Like, what's what's he asking? That's all. It's his last wish to put on his old clothes. All right, fine. So they they dress in new strong still around his neck. They dress in in the uh, in the clothes he got there, which is torn, dirty clothes. And they're about to they're about to pull the lever, and you hear a crazy crazy scream. I was like, what is that? And you see the king screaming. 
drums from the comes from the palace runs up to him gives his gives, gives his friend the biggest hugs i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i love you so much i can't believe that i almost let you that almost let that go and here i go barditcher so those like i know explains that it's the same thing with us in rosh hashanah that we could have been so just done so many things that we shouldn't have been so gone so wrong but at the end of the day we know that as the Torah says that at Har Sinai, the, the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder and louder. So no matter what we went through, no matter how many things we did, it doesn't matter. We go, we come back, we hear the shofar blast, we hear the sound of the shofar. What are we saying to Hashem? No matter how, no matter how far we've gone, no matter how distant we are, you're still the same. We're all, we're all, all of us are still the same people that, that you fell in love with. We're still the same people that you chose, that, that we chose you. That we, got, we married you on Har Sinai. And so I think it's a beautiful thing to recognize as we go into Rosh Hashanah. No matter what we went through, bad things, good things, could have been better, fine, doesn't matter. The main thing is that at the end of the day, we're not, we're, we're not, we're not bad inside. We are that, we, we mamish married to Hashem. And whenever we blow the shofar, we should recognize that we're thinking literally that we're going all the way back to our Sinai and saying, Hashem, I'm marrying you again. And, that, and as we restart this new year, she gives all bracha that we get married to Hashem, we make it to the chuppah of Sukkis, and then, and then as, as we break, as Donnie once said, we take the revels and we smash them, to, to, so to say, break the glass with our foot and really get married to Hashem, scream Mazel Tov, and then dance for the rest of the year with Hashem. <laughs> I feel like you guys can keep going for hours, which will be happen. I mean, it, it, it will happen. <laughs> oh, so good. So, so good. Um, I think uh, this is a good stopping point after what we just witnessed and experienced. So, um, Bizrat Hashem, before we conclude, all that uh, pouring out of the heart, the singing, the yearning, the thinking, the hearing, everything was for the quick refuah for Pesach Uve Ben Yosef Sarah. May have a quick refuah and for everyone who needs a refuah, whether physically, spiritually, mentally, the whole thing. And Bezrat Hashem Chavar, we should have an amazing, amazing Rosh Hashanah, a powerful Rosh Hashanah. We should take the Nigunim that we just heard from our Holy Chavar. We should take the stories, the Torah, and really try internalizing, ask ourselves questions. And we all know from the beginning that Hashem is telling us a story. And the deepest connection is us telling him our story. So Chavra, may we be Zocha. And really just uh, say, Hashem, I'm here. And this is my story. This is my story. Chavra, be well.